Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about horror books by black authors, by Asian authors, by authors of color. Let's get started. And I need to say, before we even get started, that I am horrified, like actually upset at how hard it is to find black horror authors. And I don't think it's because there aren't any horror authors who are black. I think it's because horror authors who are black don't get published. I cannot tell you how many hours I put into searching, scouring the internet. If you know of any horror authors who are black or people of color who are Asian and I haven't mentioned them in this video, please, please do me a favor and put them in the comments down below so I can check them out, so we can all check them out because I need to diversify my shit because my shit is whiter than a blizzard in Alaska. My shit is whiter than, than a polar bear's butthole. Do you know what I mean? Like it is white. By the way, also, I have not read most of these books. These books I've literally, I just scoured the internet for, I was reading reviews, I was reading synopsises, we were getting to know each other. And so I've bought a few of the books that I, that I found, I haven't bought all of them, but these are the books I found and these are the books that sounded the best to me. Bitch, get some coffee, some tea, get a snack, get something, pray if you need to, because this is going to be a long ass video. The first author that I want to talk about is Sergio Gomez and he wrote the seminal classic Camp Slaughter. Camp Slaughter is about a group of like college students who go to this like campground. There are like urban myths that there's a cannibal living out there and unbeknownst to them there actually is a cannibal living out there and the cannibal does not give a single flying fuck about anything or anyone. Such a good slaughter book. Like if you are into Chainsaw Massacre, if you are into the kind of books or movies where like there's just gratuitous violence everywhere, Camp Slaughter is the shit for you, dude. If you have not already picked it up, you need to do it, like 100%. I don't know what happened to my copy of it, which really upsets me. Sergio Gomez also has two other books. One of them is The Chaos, which is like an apocalypse novel featuring like some kind of illness that kills everyone and then maybe some monsters that come out at night, which, <laughs> yes, by the way, also, The Chaos is currently free. So if you go to like Amazon and you get the Kindle version, it's literally zero dollars. It's free 99. Um, I think it's going to be free until Tuesday. So I think the day after I upload this. And then the other one that I'm interested in is The Toy Maker, which I've seen described as goosebumps for adults. And I don't know what's more appealing to me than that. Like that's just everything I've wanted in my life, you know? Also the cover is so creepy and so good. A few other books that I've been talking about nonstop for the past month are The Murder of Molly Southbourne and The Survival of Molly Southbourne. It follows a girl named Molly who as a child realizes that every time she bleeds her blood creates a new clone of herself. Which would be like fine, like whatever, but, but the clones tend to want to murder Molly after a few days of being alive. So Molly is constantly having to check her shit, otherwise she'll be like literally destroyed by one of these clones. The fact that this weird premise is like legitimately thrilling, legitimately creepy. Tade Thompson as well is so good at stringing like this narrative along and like the book while it's like 100 to 150 pages, it doesn't feel like it's dragging or going too quickly. I really, really, really fuck with this book and I would recommend that you pick it up. Let's talk about Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. Fledgling is the story of a young vampire who wakes up, her shit's all fucked up, she can't remember anything, she's burnt to a crisp, her head has been smashed in, 
and she literally has to like find her way through the world again and through everything. She needs to like remember who she is basically. I read this book this month, spoiler alert with Kat. Personally, I wasn't that much of a fan of it. I thought it was okay. I didn't love it. I understand why other people love it or would be into it. It just wasn't it just wasn't like crazy for me, you know? It didn't have enough of that like scary vampire factor. It was very sexy though. By the way, and trigger warnings for pedophilia. I also want to quickly mention Pet by Akwiki Amezi. This is a YA speculative mystery novel? <laughs> I, I literally can't not mention it. So this is following a young girl named Jam and she lives in this utopian society where literally no one is like bad, everyone follows the rules, everyone gets along. The monsters or like the people who would commit crimes or have been eradicated or like put away. And so she lives in this utopian uh, society when she accidentally summons this being monster thing that she calls Pet. Um, and Pet has said that there is a monster in their midst and they need to go and destroy the monster. And so it's like this mystery novel of like, how could there possibly be like evil in this world that has eradicated evil? I loved it so fucking much and I cannot urge you enough to go and read this, to go and buy it. It's so good. Let's talk about author that I've just discovered. And I'm literally so excited to read all of his fucking books because they all seem so fucking good. That is Within the Shadows by Brandon Massey. This is a horror novel about this dude. He's living his life. He's got everything. He's got his nice house. He's got a nice job. He's got a nice car. However, he's missing like that one person, that one special person just for him until he meets this woman and they literally just like kick it off. They are soulmates until he realizes that she's not quite the same as everyone else, that she's different. She is very controlling, very much like you belong to me, no one else, N ain't no one gonna be touching you ever again except for me. And I think, I think she might be like an actual monster. Not like, not like a bad person monster, but like an actual monster monster. And I'm so excited to read this. I love books about like weird family members, about weird love connections. I'm so excited for this. Another book by Brandon Massey that really like caught my eye is Nana. Now this book is about Monica. Monica was adopted and for her entire life, she's been wondering about who her real mother is, but she's still persevered in her life. She has a cool ass job, successful, she's happy, but still in the back of her mind, she's like, who's my mom? Like where, why did she get rid of me? That kind of thing. Until one day, this woman shows up claiming to be her mother. She wants them to call her Nana. Nana moves in because they're a big happy family. However, Nana is doing some shady shit and might be plotting their murders, might be trying to destroy their lives and take it for herself because they find that maybe Nana has done this before. Bitch, you know who I am. You know that I love these like family dynamics that they just get me. They just get me every single time. I'm so excited. Let's talk about a little book called The Graveyard Apartment by Mariko Koiki. This is a horror novel about a family. They move into this new apartment, everything's great, and outside the apartment is a cemetery. And literally the synopsis is very short. It's literally just like, new family moves into this like really cute little apartment that like overlooks the cemetery. Horror ensues. <laughs> Horror ensues is like my favorite tagline just ever. If I ever have a motto for my life, it's just gonna be horror ensues. The cover is gorgeous. I love the idea of like living outside of a cemetery and then like all of the ghosts and stuff come and get you. It's so good. Let's talk about Stephen Graham Jones. Let's talk about The Last Final Girl. This is about a town where everything is fucking perfect. Everyone has a white picket fence. 
everyone loves their neighbor everyone is like living their life you know until one day when a girl named Lindsay escapes from this psychopathic killer who has killed all her friends she's the last girl she's the final girl she's our virgin queen that's literally what it said in the synopsis i think based on the synopsis i think what happens is Lindsay then gathers all of the other girls in her town who have been the last girls who have been the final girls and she kills them so that she can be the final girl like the final final girl i don't know exactly another book by this author that i'm so excited for and it comes out i think in july is the only good indians so this is about four native american men who have experienced trauma, I believe, in their childhood. They're all sort of out and about together, I believe in the woods, until there's some kind of creature or monster or something that wants and needs to seek revenge on them. All I know is I'm so excited about it, not only because the premise sounds like weird and creepy, but also because you never ever see horror with indigenous characters and I need it. I just need it, I'm so excited. The last book by this author that I wanna mention is Night of the Mannequins. I don't know what this book is exactly about. I know it's like a novella and I know that it features like mannequins that are probably gonna like come to life. I don't know. I love, I love creepy doll kind of shit. I love creepy dolls in books. I love creepy dolls in books. Creepy dolls in movies, no. But creepy dolls, creepy mannequins, like inanimate objects coming to life to murder people is my shit. Next up, let's talk about the whole. The whole is following a family. Family in the beginning of a novel get into a car accident and the wife and I believe the child are killed. So it's only the husband left. After the accident, he's unable to take care of himself. So he goes to live with his mother-in-law. And at first everything is great. Everything's hunky-dory. Everything's fine. Well, he sees his mother-in-law obsessing over digging these holes in his wife's old garden. And when he asks her about it, she says that she's finishing her daughter's work which is so creepy. I believe it's similar to a few of the other books I've mentioned where it's like, you know, family versus family. He's gonna, his mother-in-law is doing something weird, something sketchy. Let's talk about The Boy Who Drew Monsters by Keith Donahue. This is about a young boy who is afraid to leave his house because of past trauma from, from like when he was a lot younger. And so to fill his time, this boy draws and draws monsters. The more imagination he uses, the more thought he puts into them, the more real they become. Um, and so his family and his friends are all kind of being like haunted in a way, being hunted down by these like monsters that he's drawn. You know that I love some creepy ass kids and I love some creepy ass kids who unbeknownst to themselves create havoc on other people's lives. I love that. So this is one of the most like intriguing books I've found so far. This is The Resurrectionist by Rath James White. This is following a man who has the ability to resurrect or heal the dead. And rather than using this power for good or to help people, he uses it to torment this woman by murdering her and then like the next day bringing her back to life just to murder her again. And she has to find her way out of this loop with this psychopath. I'm so fucking excited for this book. The, the premise of that is so horrifying and wonderful. Another one that I saw from him is called Succulent Prey and this is based on an idea of psychopathy being contagious. I think there's one dude who's almost murdered by a serial killer, but makes, but like gets away by the skin of his teeth. And he then starts to have ideas about murdering other people, which like, yes. Let's talk about Goth by Stiucci. This is a collection of short stories 
following the same two girls, I believe, who have a somewhat unhealthy obsession with uh, serial killers and murder. <laughs> I think I read like the first two stories in this. The idea of it being a short story collection caught me off guard. I was expecting it to be just one giant novel. It wasn't. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like not that into it anymore. But I think I might go back to it eventually. Because what I had read from it, those whenever I read it before, was actually really, really good. The imagery that it provoked was so disgusting. The writing is really good. The translation is really good. The descriptions, the body horror is... If you're into body horror, you might want to check this out. Now, I forgot to grab this book before I came down to film, but I'm going to be talking about The Only Child. The Only Child is about this woman. I believe she's a psychologist. For some reason, has to be the guardian of a young girl. Like, all of a sudden. They're just like, here's this kid, good luck, basically. And so she has to take care of this young girl and around the same time she gets a phone call like from somebody and they're like, hey, the serial killer that like literally won't talk to anyone wants to talk to you. They want to tell you their secrets. Through talking with the serial killer and raising this child, she realizes that they exhibit very similar behavior patterns. I love kids who want to murder people. <sighs> Like, there's one thing of, like, a kid being like, they're here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of, like, cutesy creepiness. I love it when children actively, actively try to harm adults, try to kill them. I love that kind of storyline. Sometimes it can be cheesy. Sometimes it's not great. But other times it can be really, really fun. Let's talk about Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marino Garcia and it's coming out I think either at the end of June or the beginning of July. I can't quite remember. I will put the date on the screen. From what I got from the description, it's an isolated mansion. This douchey, manipulative, charming aristocrat and socialites. And I think that there's going to be some kind of like murder thing happening, like maybe one of them gets murdered, maybe one of them is trying to murder the other ones. I don't know that much about it. I want to go into it blind. The cover is, sounds so like atmospheric and dark. Like, there's those like movies or books about rich people going to these like extravagant things and then they're just haunted, but it's still like kind of extravagant. Let's talk about a book that should be no surprise to you. Uh, and that is Rings by Koji Suzuki. So this is about, I believe a videotape that's going around and if somebody watches it, they die seven days later. And that's all I know about it. I might actually read this in 2020. What kind of video would this be if I didn't mention Junji Ito? Have Uzumaki and Gyo by Junji Ito. These are horror graphic novels. So Uzumaki I read earlier this year and it's following a town that is becoming cursed by spirals and it's one of the most unsettling things I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And then Gyo I don't know that much about. I haven't read it yet. It's substantially shorter is about, I believe, a girlfriend and a boyfriend who go to the beach and then they realize that there's like these weird fish monsters that have legs or something. I don't know that much. These are like a really, really good place to go if you want like horror, but you wanna like, you wanna feel that like visceral reaction to something. These are really good. Let's talk about Victor Laval. Let's talk about the devil in silver. This dude who, goes to a psychiatric ward because he's being convicted of a crime but he didn't commit the crime. From what I know, at night, while he's trying to go to bed, something in his locked room in this ward comes out and like terrifies him or something. I literally, that's all I know about it. I don't know that much about it, but based on that, yes. We love a caged in moment. We love to caged in, have nowhere to go, trapped kind of feeling. We love that. By the way, in case you weren't aware, I plan on getting all of these books because they all sound so good, but I'm a student and I'm poor, so 
Another book by him that really caught my interest was called The Change Life. This is about a husband and wife and they are happy as can be until the wife just gets pregnant and she gives birth and they have a child and the child is beautiful and they're so happy but then the wife starts acting really strangely and the husband's like oh she probably has like postpartum or something but it goes a step further than that when she does this terrible violent thing and the husband goes on this journey to find his wife because she has disappeared um, and he's going to like, I think a different realm or like a different world. It's called the changeling, which makes me think that of fairies. So he could be going to like the fairy world, or it makes me think of like Greek mythology. Um, and that one where the dude has to go back to hell to get his wife. Is that Persephone? And I don't know if it's technically horror, but I'm still going to pick it up because it sounds really cool. Also by Victor Laval is Destroyer which is a graphic novel about Frankenstein or like a retelling of Frankenstein. Kat told me about it. Kat was super, super hyped on it. And so I was like, that sounds fucking amazing. I'm gonna get me some of that too. They have it on Scribd, by the way. By the way, in case you don't know, I have a link in my description to Scribd where you can get two months for free. If you sign up with my link, I get a month free too. So if you wanna check it out, they have a whole bunch of these books on Scribd. No fucking pressure though. You can literally just go to Scribd's website yourself and sign up if you want, but it's there. Anyway, moving on. In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. I've heard a few people talk about this, this book over the years. Seems weird and graphic because a lot of people I think have said that it's really fucked up and that it's like the weirdest book they've ever read. And I'm really into that. So this is about a tourist who goes to Japan and he meets this dude who is like hey like show me around the city like be my little tour guide and so this guy is showing this other this white tourist around and he gets all of these little clues that add up to the tourist being like a killer of some sort and as their tour uh, moves forward he's more and more convinced that this guy is gonna murder him it sounds so good and so weird and I love it I'm so excited that's like up there on my list let's talk about one of my most anticipated books just like 20 of 2020 let's talk about clown in a cornfield by Adam Cesar this I believe is being published in August this book is YA I believe and we're following a like a group of teenagers and them trying to survive against this clown. I don't know that much about it, but I'm really, really excited for it. Like super, super, super excited for it. Another author that I'm so excited to get into is Tanan and Reeve Du. I'm pre like 100% sure I'm saying that wrong and I'm so sorry. The book that I'm most interested in from her is called The Good House. And this is about a woman who has a son and the son commit suicide and she's like you know thrown into despair and then I think a few years later she returns to the house where where he died only to find that the town and the house are like in shambles the hometown that she's living in is infested with this evil that is just like creating violence and like anger inside of people I'm so excited for this. It is like 700 pages long, like ridiculously long, but I'm also, I'm also willing to go. I'm also willing to go there, you know? Cause like if it's 700 pages, like there has to be a reason it's 700 pages, right? So I'm very excited for that one. Another one of hers that I'm super fucking excited for is called My Soul to Keep. And it's about this woman. She gets married to this dude and they are happy. They're so happy. So many of these synopsises are starting with this premise. They're so happy. They're in love. They have a child, they get married and all this other stuff. And then the wife realizes that a whole bunch of her friends are mysteriously being murdered or mysteriously dying. And she finds out that her husband is like a 400 year old immortal dude who made a deal with the devil, I think, to be immortal. And he is being called back to where he's from. He, he tells her that he wants her and the child to join him. 
and he's willing to and going to mm -hmm. going to do this forbidden ritual so to ensure that she and the child stay with him forever it sounds like one of those books that's like that's like starts out really cute and quiet and nice and then slowly it just amps up and just gets creepier and weirder as it goes on i'm so into it next up we have white is for witching by helen oyemi this book is a little bit weird I kept reading the synopsis and trying to understand what exactly it was about and the moment I got it I was like yes. I did buy this book literally a few days ago. It came in the mail and I can't find it. My life is an actual shambles. White is for Witching is about these two twins are born. While they're very similar in the fact that they look alike and everything, they're very different and their mother dies. One of them wants to move on, wants to like get on with their life, right? The other twin is not up for that and doesn't want that at all and is willing to do anything to keep the twin with them. I'm pretty sure it involves like witches and magic. I read so many reviews about people who fucking love this book and who swear by it. So one of the strangest books that I came across was Parasite Eve by Hideki Sena. This sounds so weird and so interesting and so creepy. So basically, the book is following a man whose wife has just died and he is like bereft. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's horrified and he's saddened, right? He's in despair. And he just keeps having these ideas, these thoughts of wanting to resurrect his wife wanting to bring her back to life somehow. Because she was an organ donor, she, her kidney was given to a young girl, except the husband somehow got a small sample of her kidney. And from that small sample, for some reason, it starts to mutate, starts to like grow, I guess. And it starts to like get its own consciousness. Creepy and amazing. It sounds so fucking good and also, the cover is gorgeous. I love the cover. Next up, we have Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is about a school or like a boarding school that has like some kind of culty vibes. It's like, it's one of those stories where the school is so prestigious and like high up on its own horse that of course it would have some kind of dark underbelly of like seedy, creepy shit happening. I literally have no idea what this is about. All I know is it has the school and a bunch of like rich people and that's it. That's all I know about it. I've heard a lot of mixed things about it. A lot of people either really fucking love it or they really fucking hate it, but I'm hoping to be in the love category. Next, we have a book that isn't actually like a horror novel, but I wanted to fit it in just because it sounds so good and it has so many good ratings. And that is Devil in a Blue Dress by Walter Mosley. This is a mystery novel about this dude who's a veteran. He's down on his luck. He just lost his mortgage. His shit could not be more fucked up. Hell, he is given the chance to work on a case where a white woman who frequented a lot of like black bars was murdered or gone missing or something. And so he takes the case. It just sounds so good. That has it has such good ratings on Goodreads. Could it not add it to this list? Next, we have Little Secrets by Jen Hillier. This is a thriller novel about a woman who has like the perfect family. They're happy, they're healthy, they're they're thriving, they're striving, right? The son is randomly just taken, just he goes missing, stolen. What's the kicker though, is that the husband's mistress, the husband's hoe, might have actually kidnapped the child. I wanted to include some kind of like drama, some kind of, <laughs> some kind of like juicy thriller kind of vibes, because we fucking love that. Another book by Jennifer is uh, called Jar of Hearts, and I have this one coming actually, I, I ordered it. It's about a girl who goes missing. And I think about 11 years later, her body is found. The police realize from the remains found that her murder is connected to this one dude. But their little friend group 
of the girl who was murdered come to realize as well that one of them knew about this connection between the missing girl and this dude and never fucking said anything for 11 years. Like, yeah, cool, we found the bad guy, this is great. Or did they? <laughs> this has such good reviews, honestly, and it sounds so interesting. And we love a thriller about a group of friends. We love that kind of like close drama type of shit. That's what we live for, bitch. Next book is technically, I think, a sci-fi. But when I read the synopsis, I was like, that's really fucked up. And so I added it to the list. That is Brown Girl in the Ring by, by Nalo Hopkinson. This is a book after the apocalypse and it's set in Toronto. And basically how it works is the, the rich and the wealthy and the people who are higher up in the like social systems will harvest the bodies of the poor. And by harvest, I don't know what that means. It was in the synopsis, it's what I wrote down, but from Harvest, you would think like rich are eating the poor. That's what I got from it. And we're following a young girl who is just trying to survive and just trying to make it out without being eaten by the rich. Literally, we've talked about, I think 39 books at this point. Like we're almost at 40, this is 40. How to Recognize a Demon Has Become Your Friend by Linda Addison. I'm adding this because I love the fucking cover and I love the premise of the short stories. This is, just, this is a short story collection, by the way. Let's talk about the last book I have here, and that is Revenge by Yoko Ogoa. This seems like a novel, but it seems like it's centering around many different people. And I think, I think that it's going to be telling stories individually of these different people and their relationships and like it's going to center around revenge I'm assuming and like violence and murder but then maybe at the end it'll all tie together I don't know all I know is that it's a classic and it looks cool so <laughs> thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I'm sorry if I went too quickly for some of these books. It's just, I found so many of them and that, and I wanted to not have this video be like two hours long. And I haven't, I haven't read most of them. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit here. We talk about creepy shit here. We talk about families here, but usually they're dysfunctional and we love that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one.